So hi guys, um, in the last video we got so far as we have created our uh, web application in Python and this web application is now able to take in inputs, retain these inputs, output these inputs and one thing I would like to note again is that if I go to page source I will only see the HTML so basically any user using your web application will only see the HTML they will never see the Python code and we have here right now you know I, you know some some substantial Python code but you never see that in the um, in the web page and uh, that's the difference between server-side uh, scripts or, or, or programming languages and client-side uh, scripts or programming languages so basically Python is a server-side uh, language with which you generate HTML but you never see the Python similarly if you have a if the, you have the language PHP for instance does the same thing you generate in PHP uh, the code which in turn generates then the HTML similarly it can be said of many other languages like Ruby like um, uh, I don't know Java whereas with JavaScript for instance this is a client-side language and you would see then the, the Java script in here um, and you could read that basically right now let's take that a step further and one way uh, let's start with this one here uh, you know that that's taking a lot of lines these checks and there's a simple way to do it you can use one line ifs and these go like this just let me copy that over here so i value is let me just enlarge that if that i value is nothing if is none else and then it is this uh, copy and paste and take that off and let's test it save it reduce and let's convert uh, save it yeah and still works so basically i can do the same the same thing with um, with the other um, ifs so that would be from unit. So I just converted them. And if I reduce that and save it, and then let's try it out here. It still works nicely. And if I call the app as a new user, everything works great. And try some inputs. Um, I don't know, yard and km. And it works great okay so uh, we got that that far now we need to do some conversion here and in the previous videos we did conversions in a command line uh, for uh, or, or uh, way and we, we got so far as we are able now or we have built a function which is able to do that conversion and that function is lying somewhere and now what I gotta do is basically import this function and we did that already in our uh, one of the final versions of the command line uh, application we use those three lines and basically import sys then that's the path of the um, of, of that module and that is the the actual uh, module that we're importing and we're importing everything and uh, now what we need to do we need to do two things we we know that this module or let me call it up so there's our module from from back then and we see that inputs have has to be a dictionary and it does all the work database is here and it does all those uh, all that conversion it gives us uh, a conversion value and a string output and what I now need is basically to uh, import that function uh, that module and use that function but first of all I would have what's that the old HTML file we don't need that anymore um, we, I've imported that now I need to build these inputs uh, or, or convert these inputs into a dictionary and let's do that here and let me enlarge that 
So that's that's my dictionary. User inputs is value input. Uh, I value for, uh, from input is from unit and to input is uh, to unit. That's my dictionary. And uh, here it's very important to be aware that this can only take place if the user has put any input. So we have to put a condition and that condition would be if uh, I value is not empty and that's very important and they, all three have to be full from unit is also not empty and to unit is also not empty colon and then that is going to be done so this process user inputs this process is only taking place uh, when all three have been input by the user and here we can define user inputs as a dict right and we might as well if i go back and look at the function it also produces a dict so might as well um, create a dictionary in this case and uh, let's call it the uh, conversion outputs equal to dict right so far so good and we don't need that stuff anymore but we can here test something uh, let's what does our user what what do our user inputs look like All right save that reduce that and send again and we see here now we have a dictionary value input is 46 uh, from input is kilometer and to input is mile right now comes the next step where we have to uh, basically uh, call the function and we have conversion outputs a dictionary and basically and this function call this function call has also let me enlarge it again this function call space it uh, this function call has to take place if all are filled so it comes in here under that if so uh, we said conversion outputs and that is and what's our function called i forgot uh, it's called convert units okay so convert units and open up and user inputs right so now save it and now let's print we have our inputs let's print our outputs and let's print the br between them or two brs better yet to have a sort of a uh, empty line right and here we have conversion outputs i better copy stuff because i do a lot of spelling mistakes and that is detrimental for code right so we got that we saved that and let's try it out and here we go we have the value input is 46, form input is kilometer, two input is mile, and here's our output as the where statement. Because remember, remember, our output is a dictionary, and we have first of all the where statement. There it is. Then we have basically this and or stuff. Then we have the conversion type, kilometer to mile, and the conversion value is 46. And then we have uh, the end result right and the conversion value here is you see is basically a float of the input value right uh, what we can do is yeah so basically now we if we need to, to, to have the output all we gotta do is not print conversion outputs but print that part of the dictionary that we're interested in which is basically string output uh, yeah. right close that and now we should you know i'm not interested in all of that i just need the the string output and string user inputs right got it right let's press again and here we go so now we are able to convert uh all that and we don't need this you can actually, in uh, 
in your production code or real-time code, you can basically just comment that stuff out. And, uh, oh, by the way, um, in Notepad++ and in um, Visual Studio Code, to comment stuff in or out with, um, in Python is basically Control Q. In Notepad++, it, it is Control Q for all languages. Um, in uh, Visual Code as well. In if you're using PyCharm, it is Control and ba and slash, or basically Control and the, that division symbol on your uh, num keypad. Right. So save that and let's do another. Let's press again. And now I'm getting that exactly the conversion I need. And you see now I can input anything. What do we take? Let's take uh, five, six, four, and convert that from millimeter or centimeter two yards and bingo and we got it we got everything in here and the thing is that all the functionality that we have in our function is in here because I can just write in full um, kilometer convert and I'm getting it. so everything the, all the work as you see as you see now through this series, the, the bulk of our work was in producing this and to have it work clean. And that was the bulk of the work. And this part here is basically just the chassis, as I always said. And this is basically just taking in the user inputs and building up the installation for the engine and then calling the engine. And then, again, having an installation for, um, for, uh, for the outputs. But the bulk of the work, the engine, was here. And that has to be, um, you know, ensured, or you as a, as a, as a, as a developer has to in, have to ensure that um, this engine is working fine. Because the chassis is relatively easy. And you see here now... We have taken our the very same engine. I haven't touched this engine since the last time. And I've taken this very same engine and installed it now in a web application. Whereas previously, uh, a couple of videos back, I installed the very same engine in a command line uh, uh, application. And the coding there was a bit different, but basically the engine was not touched, neither by the command line guy, nor now by me, the web, the web application guy. So you see here, that's the benefit of having those or to regard certain elements of your code as an engine, which you then put somewhere and then you can use that engine multiple uh, ways. And obviously, if you notice certain errors or certain stuff, you know, uh, then you can always improve the engine. For instance, what happens if I input here like any doubly goop, you know? Well, see, that's bad because now the, the, the application crashed and that's because the engine cannot handle stuff because the engine does not have a sort of a, a, um, an exception management system or a, an error management system because what it does, it converts, always converts the input to flow. Well, if I put some gobbledygook in there, then it's going to try to convert that and that's not going to work. You see, so here again, I have to go back to my engine, improve that engine and then you know, or send a new version to the to the chassis guy, and that chassis guy will then, um, you know, put that new engine in and not have those errors again. So that's that's sort of the work we have. And this engine, remember, this engine has got to handle multiple uh, chassis, multiple cars. It has to handle those those um, um, uh, you know command line applications. It has to handle this web web application. It has to handle other web applications which might have other demands. You know, for instance here, you know, I'm not very interested in that string. I would like just to have the value. Now, the engine does not have such a thing. So why not add that? And that's the beauty of having dictionaries as output. I just add it. And um, I'm just trying to see where's my, uh, oh, here it is. Conversion value time factor. Uh, yeah, well, let's you see. I can now improve my engine. I can take that. Oops. Yeah, let me let me make that bigger. So I can take that. Listen. 
right and create a new variable which is basically converted value and this is equal to that and then in here I will just say converted value and have this in here instead of this multiplication right and uh, here we can have converted value and converted value save it now I've changed just modified slightly my engine uh, let's see if everything still works oh server error okay must have done something wrong let's see where's our mistake right I got it it's in here gotta tap to gotta this has to be on the right save it now that should work let's try it out again uh, still so it was the tabs right let's try it out now it should work yep it works right but now I can call converted value if I go back to um, <clears throat> to my index and here not the string input but converted value and now I should just get the value I need without the text and there we have it. so I can now as chassis guy you know disregard the string the engine guy is sending me and just type my own string uh, uh, you know output for lack of a better word and plus right so now if I convert I have all what I need <clears throat> and now you see you see how, how how the interaction is between the chassis side or basically that um, you know the application without the engine and how the engine is and you see the interaction because you know, me as a chassis guy I you know I just needed the value engine was not able to do that so I had to you know modify my engine slightly now I'm able to in output the the converted value on its own and so on see so so uh, and this is the way you 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 have this interaction that's the beauty of having dictionaries outputs all other guys all other guys using your function are not affected there you can only inform them oh hey guys I've got a new element in the dictionary which is this use it if you want but you know if you don't use it no no problem because everything else is the same and that's what I like about having dictionary outputs if I had now if I had this as a list then obviously this would have now become element number uh, 0 1 2 3 4 element number 4 instead of element number 3 which would have broken a lot of other guys uh, uh, programs who are depending on that you see so that's why with dictionaries you're very flexible you know all you know you, 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 all the users will not have to adapt their programs to whatever was there they can adapt to what's new but then that's fair enough